Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian. I just have a short piece here that I wanted to put on film because I was doing some tinkering on a pistol and it turned into kind of an interesting subject, specifically on the subject of hand-fitted parts. So, what I was looking at was my French 1874 revolver, which works fantastically well. However, it has been deactivated by having the tip of the firing pin cut off. So I was looking at ways to fix this. And at this point, let's just move straight over to the workbench and show you a close-up of what I'm getting at here, because the whole point is to see the little minuscule details in this. All right, so here is my 1874 revolver. Now, if we take a closer look at the hammer, you can see that the end has been clipped off. Here is a proper hammer for it. You can see that the firing pin end there is substantially longer. So this works. I can cock it, fire single action. We know this is empty, but I'll show you there. Can fire it double action. Works really well, nice and smooth. I just don't have the firing pin to make it work. So I figured the simplest solution was to get myself a replacement hammer. This is actually from an 1873 uh, revolver, but uh, frankly the hammers are interchangeable between the two, or in theory they are. So uh, this is a replacement part from Numark, and what I needed to do was take apart the gun and install it. So let's go ahead and do that. Pop that out of the way, then push this button in, which allows me to pull out. Come on. It's tight. There we go pull out my cylinder axis pin, which is also the screwdriver to disassemble the gun. We can then pull this back, open the loading gate, pull the cylinder out and get that out of the way. Then on this side, I have this screw right here, which we can loosen take out by hand. All right, screws out. Now there's a little slot right there. I can put the screwdriver into it and just pop that. Side plate comes off, grip comes off, and there are the internals to the gun. So now what I'm gonna do is flip this. That takes all of the tension off the mainspring. I can pull the mainspring out. And then oh, we'll take the trigger guard off as well to relieve tension. We just pull that back and down. That comes off. The trigger return spring will be loose and fall out. Otherwise, we'll take that out. Then I can pull the hammer out. I'm going to pull the trigger down just to relieve pressure on all of the surfaces in the hammer. There's that hammer. Leave that guy right there. And now I can take my replacement hammer and put it in, drops in nicely. Everything seems good, goes down nicely. However, what I discovered was it doesn't, it's really, really tight when I try to cock it. In fact, I cannot cock this in single action. Now, when you cock the hammer here in single action, what's supposed to happen is that this surface right here mates up with that surface and locks the hammer back. I can't get it to go far enough to do that. Now, just for reference sake, let me pull this out. Let's put the original hammer back in. In this one, there we go. We're cocked in single action. Hammer's back, good to go. My replacement part can't do it. it. Doesn't go back far enough. What's happening is the surfaces here are interfering with each other. Now this did actually work just barely in double action because in double action it actually doesn't go back as far onto here. Um, initially I will point out this also was interfering with the frame right up here. You can see I did some grinding on it there um, because of of course, this is a replacement hammer, not the original one. And I got it so that it fit on its own nice and smoothly against the frame, but it still wouldn't 
cock and fire in single action. So I actually also have an 1873 pattern French revolver, which like I said is mechanically identical. Uh, the 74 was the officer's model that was lightened a bit. Um, but I was curious, what if I take the hammer out of the 1873, and by the way it works great in the 1873, what if I tried this one? So once again, it fits in there just fine, looks like it's working okay, and you can hear that it'll click into single action, but the lockup right here between the sear and the hammer is really, really light, to the point that I can actually pull the hammer forward just with my finger. This is the equivalent of bumping the back of the hammer and having the gun discharge. So this one also does not work, despite the fact that in the gun it came out of, it works perfectly. So looking at all, all three of these side by side, they all pretty much look identical. Uh, it's only in the very slight differences, things like the exact location of these interface surfaces on the bottom, that you know a millimeter of difference in that is a huge amount of difference. And while, for example, I was able to grind on the back of this hammer to uh, relieve it and allow it to, to fit mechanically, you can't do that on these surfaces because these surfaces are heat treated. They're hardened so that they will maintain that sharp point and not wear over time. If those do wear, then you end up with a problem of the pistol not staying cocked or being too easy to accidentally discharge. Now, I don't know if we can see it well, but let's give it a try looking at the actual comparison of these two surfaces. Got All right, so I've got these two pretty well lined up here. The one on top is my original hammer and the one on bottom is my replacement. And if I pivot these around so you can see this. All right, they're still lined up so that this notch is even on both of them and the, the body of the hammer is even on both of them. And now you can see just how much difference there is right here in the sear engagement surface for single action. So that should give you, I mean, that that's not something that you can just fix with a Dremel tool. That's some substantial gunsmithing work to repair. So, so that's what I wanted to show you guys today. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, the proper way to for me to fix this problem, which is what I'm gonna go ahead and go do now, is to actually get a gunsmith to weld on an extra blob onto the end of this clipped firing pin and then machine it down to this original profile. That way, all of the very delicate uh, hand fitting of these engagement surfaces uh, is still usable. I don't have to mess with it. The firing pin itself is a much, much lower tolerance part. Uh, it's not as important to have it exactly perfect. All it has to do is hit the primer and fire the cartridge. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. I thought it'd be cool to give people a little first-hand look at what hand-fitted parts can really mean on a pistol of this sort of age, the 1870s. So maybe give you a, a little more respect for the work that gunsmiths have to do to actually work on guns like this. So thanks for watching. Tune in again next week to ForgottenWeapons.com.